Hello everyone, this is Omkar Singh. In this video, we'll learn physics from class 10, chapter number 10, light, reflection and refraction. So now let us start with the video. The topic which we are going to cover in this video are spherical mirrors, terms related to the spherical mirrors, principal focus of a spherical mirror, and the rules for obtaining images found by spherical mirror. Now let us see these topics one by one. Spherical mirror. What is a spherical mirror? A spherical mirror is that mirror whose reflecting surface is the part of a hollow sphere of glass. The spherical mirrors are of two types, concave mirror and convex mirrors. So there are two types of spherical mirrors, concave mirror and convex mirror. Now let us see the difference between concave mirror and a convex mirror. So a convex mirror is a mirror whose reflecting surface is curved outward whereas a concave mirror is a mirror whose reflecting surface is curved inward. So as we can see in this figure that this surface is curved outward. So this is a convex mirror. And this mirror where the reflecting surface is curved inward is actually a concave mirror. So this is the basic difference between a concave mirror and a convex mirror. We can also take example of a spoon. So let us consider a spoon. So as we all have seen spoon that this part which is curved inward this part is actually concave and the part which is curved outward is convex. So just taking the simple example of a spoon we can understand the difference between a concave mirror and a convex mirror. Now let us see the terms related to spherical mirrors. So the terms related to spherical mirrors are center of curvature, pole, radius of curvature, principal axis and aperture. Now let us see these terms one by one. So for that let us consider a concave mirror. So if we complete this concave mirror from all the ends it will look like a sphere. Right? So the center of that sphere is actually the center of curvature. That is we can say that center of curvature of a spherical mirror is the center of a hollow sphere of glass of which the spherical mirror is a part and we denote it by capital letter C. Now what is pole? So pole is actually the center point of the mirror or we can also call that pole is actually the center of the reflecting surface, the reflecting part of the mirror, the center of that part is the pole of the mirror. Next we have radius of curvature. So the radius of curvature of a spherical mirror is the radius of the hollow sphere of which the spherical mirror is a part and it is represented by capital letter R. So here in this diagram we can just connect center of curvature and pole then this distance is the radius of curvature the distance between center of curvature and pole. Next we have principal axis. So principal axis of a spherical mirror is the straight line passing through the center of curvature C and the pole of a spherical mirror produced on both the sides. And then we have aperture. One more thing I would like to add upon the principal axis that this line is actually an imaginary line passing through both the points. Imaginary because we cannot see it. Then we have aperture. Aperture of a spherical mirror is the diameter of the reflecting surface of the mirror. So suppose if this is your mirror then the diameter of this reflecting surface is actually the aperture of the mirror. Now here I would like to add one more thing about the concave mirror and convex mirror. So basically concave mirror is also known as a converging mirror because the rays falling on this concave mirror will converge towards each other that means they will come towards each other. Whereas in case of a convex mirror if the rays fall on it then these rays will diverge from the point of reflection that means they will move away from each other they will never ever meet with each other that is why concave mirror is known as a converging mirror and convex mirror is known as a diverging mirror now let us understand the principal focus of a spherical mirror principal focus of a concave mirror the light rays that are parallel to the principal axis so in this case we can see that all these light rays are parallel to principal 
axis that is they are moving towards the concave mirror and they are parallel to principal axis so after reflection from the mirror all these light rays meet at one point and that point on the principal axis is known as principal focus for a concave mirror and as we can see here that they, they these rays are actually meeting at the point so this focus is also known as a real focus because the rays are actually meeting at the point on the principal axis now let us see the principal focus of a convex mirror so in this case we can see that the rays which are coming parallel to the principal axis obviously it is a diverging mirror so the reflected rays will go away from the mirror and they will never meet but if we produce these rays backward then we can see that all these rays are meeting at one common point and this point is known as principal focus for a convex mirror now let us see some more terms like focal length so focal length is basically the distance of the point of focus from the pole of the mirror that means this distance is known as the focal length and we denote focal length by small letter f we denote focal length by small letter f now let us see the relation between the radius of curvature and focal length of a spherical mirror the focal length of a spherical mirror is equal to half of its radius of curvature given by this relation f is equal to r by 2 and in another words we can say that spherical mirrors of small apertures that means whose aperture is small the curvature is less there the radius of curvature is found to be equal to twice the focal length that is r is equal to 2f so this relation is basically just an approximation but if we take spherical mirrors of small apertures then we get that this relation comes out to be almost equal that we can consider r is equal to 2f now let us see the rules for obtaining images found by spherical mirror now for image formation one thing we should keep in mind that image will be formed at a point where the reflected rays will meet after reflection so that means the two rays must meet for the image to be formed so here we can draw any two rays and find the position of the image formed and obtain the image so let us see various cases so in the first case if we consider a ray parallel to the principal axis so we can see that in both the types of mirror the rays are passing through the principal focus so let us consider this concave mirror where the incident ray is parallel to the principal axis and after reflection this ray is passing through the principal focus of a concave mirror and if we consider the case of a convex mirror the ray which is parallel to the principal axis after reflection it will go away from the mirror but if we produce this ray backward then we will see that it passes through a point on the principal axis and this point is known as principal focus for a convex mirror so this focus is a real focus and this focus is a virtual focus because the rays are not actually passing through this point we are just producing the rays backward and this is the point of intersection with the principal axis so this point will be the principal focus for concave mirror and this point is the principal focus for a convex mirror now let us see the second case in the second case we will take just uh, opposite of the first point that is if the incident ray passes through the principal focus of a concave mirror let us see this first case one so the incident ray is passing through the principal focus and after reflection the reflected ray will go parallel to the principal axis just vice versa of the first point that means the first point was if the ray passes through uh, passing passes parallel to the principal axis then it will pass through focus reflected ray but in the second case if we consider opposite scenario that if the ray is passing through principal focus then the reflected ray will go parallel to the principal axis similar case we can consider with a convex mirror where the incident ray if we consider that this incident ray is coming towards the principal focus because it cannot pass through the focus so if we consider a ray coming towards the principal focus of a convex mirror 
then the reflected ray will go parallel to the principal axis. Now let us see the third case. So in this case, we consider a ray passing through the center of curvature. So if we see the condition for a concave mirror, if the ray passes through center of curvature, then we can see clearly that the reflected ray is also passing through the same point. That means the reflected ray is retracing its path. It is following the same path. Now why does this happen? So as we know, according to the law of reflection, that the angle of incidence is always angle of reflection. So if we consider a plane surface and this is normal incident ray, it will make some angle with the normal that is angle of incidence, reflected ray which makes again some angle with the normal which is angle of reflection and by this law angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection which the rays makes with the normal at the point of incidence despite irrespective of the surface let it be a regular surface or an irregular surface this law is always valid so if we consider this scene then the ray which is coming or passing through the center of curvature towards the mirror then that ray is actually the radius of that sphere and we know that according to geometry the radius is always perpendicular to the spherical surface therefore this ray itself will act as a normal so if we consider this ray as a normal then the incident ray is making a zero degree angle with the normal and similarly following the law of reflection the reflected ray will also make the same angle that is zero degree angle with the normal so that is why the reflected ray also follows the same path now let us see the case of a convex mirror so in case of a convex mirror if we consider a ray which seems to pass through center of curvature then the reflected ray will just again retrace its path in a similar way following the same rule now let us see another case where a ray incident obliquely to the principal axis now again the point center of curvature and the pole the line joining them is again the radius of the sphere and also it is normal to the spherical surface then again this principal axis itself will act as a normal so any ray which is incident obliquely to the principal axis making some angle with the principal axis that is angle of incidence then the reflected ray will also make same angle with the principal axis because the principal axis here is acting as a normal then according to law of reflection this i will always be equal to r now consider the case of a convex mirror now in this mirror the incident ray is again made to incident the convex mirror at some point p which is pole of that mirror is making some angle with the principal axis and we can see that the reflected ray is also making the same angle with the principal axis following the same law that is law of reflection according to which angle i should be equal to angle r so these are the four rules which we'll see once again that according to the first rule if a ray is parallel to the principal axis it will pass through principal focus second that a ray passing through the principal focus of a concave mirror will go parallel to the principal axis and in case of a convex mirror if we consider a ray which uh, seems to pass through the focus then the reflected ray will go parallel to the principal axis the third rule third rule a ray passing through the center of curvature of a concave mirror will retrace its path and the same goes for convex mirror and the fourth rule a ray which is incident obliquely to the principal axis that will make some angle with the principal axis so according to this rule the reflected ray is also going to make the same angle with the principal axis so these were the topics which we have covered in this video thank you